Building an off-grid solar power system is not as simple as just buying a few solar panels and hoping for the best. If you get the calculations wrong, you could end up without power in the middle of the night, with dead batteries and no way to run essential appliances. In fact, undersizing your system is one of the biggest mistakes people make, leading to expensive upgrades and frustrating power failures. The good news is that with the right calculations, you can build a system that runs your entire home smoothly, day and night, even in bad weather. In this video, I'll walk you through how to size your solar panels, batteries and inverter step by step. By the end, you'll know exactly how to design a reliable off-grid system that fits your energy needs, whether you're powering a small cabin or a full-sized home. Do not forget to like this video, share it and subscribe to our channel. Let's get started. The first step in sizing your off-grid solar system is to figure out how much electricity your household consumes every day. Every appliance you use, from lights and fans to refrigerators and TVs, draws a certain amount of energy, measured in watt hours. To do this, you need to create an energy audit. Start by listing every device you plan to power, along with how many watts it consumes and how many hours per day it will run. For example, LED lights, 10 watts, x5 hours, you have 50 watt hours. Refrigerator, 150 watts, x10 hours, you have 1500 watt hours. Laptop, 60 watts x3 hours, ILO 280 watt hours. Once you've listed all your appliances, add up the total watt hours for each day. Let's say your daily consumption comes to 5000 watt hours or 5 kilowatt hours. That's how much energy your system needs to generate and store every day to keep everything running smoothly, even when the sun isn't shining. Now that you know your daily energy consumption, the next step is to size your solar panel array. Solar panels generate electricity when sunlight hits them, but the amount of energy they produce depends on how much sunlight your location receives. This is measured in peak sun hours, the number of hours per day when the sun's intensity is strong enough to generate full power from your panels. For example, if you live in an area with 5 peak sun hours per day, you can multiply the wattage of your solar panels by 5 to estimate how much energy they'll produce daily. To meet your 5 kilowatt daily energy need, you'll need at least 1000 watts of solar panels. Here's how the math works. In 5 kilowatt per day, 5 peak sun hours in 1000 watts of solar capacity. But wait, solar panels rarely operate at full efficiency due to clouds, dust, temperature changes and shading. So it's smart to oversize your solar array by 20-30% to ensure you generate enough power even in less than perfect conditions. In this case you'd want to install 1.2 to 1.5 kilowatt hours of solar panels. That could be 4 to 5 300 watt panels. Since you're going off grid, you'll need a battery bank to store excess energy generated during the day for use at night. The size of your battery bank depends on how much energy you'll need when the sun isn't shining. If your daily usage is 5 kg, your batteries need to store at least 5 kilokilos of energy. But it's a good idea to add some extra capacity for cloudy days. There are two main battery types to consider. One, lead acid batteries. Cheaper, but can only be discharged to 50% of their capacity. Two, lithium batteries. More expensive, but can be discharged up to 90%, meaning fewer batteries are needed. Let's assume you go with lithium batteries and want to store two days worth of energy, 10 kilowatt hours, for backup. You'd need a 10 kilowatt -kilo battery bank, for example, four 200A lithium batteries at 12 volts each would do the job. If you opt for lead acid batteries, you'd need twice as many since only half their capacity is usable. Next, let's talk about the inverter. 
Solar panels and batteries produce DC power, but most household appliances run on AC power. The inverter converts DC to AC so your appliances can function. When choosing an inverter, you need to look at two key factors. One, power rating in watts. This tells you how much power the inverter can supply at any given moment. Make sure it's big enough to handle the combined wattage of all the appliances you plan to run at once. If your refrigerator, 150 watts, lights, 100 watts, and laptop, 60 watts, are running simultaneously, you'll need an inverter rated for at least 400 watts. But it's always a good idea to oversize your inverter slightly for safety. So in this case, go with a 600 watt inverter. Two, pure sine wave versus modified sine wave. A pure sine wave inverter is recommended because it provides clean, stable power that won't damage sensitive electronics like laptops or medical devices. A solar charge controller is essential for regulating the power from your solar panels before it reaches your batteries. It ensures that the batteries aren't overcharged during the day and helps them charge efficiently. There are two types of charge controllers. One, PWM, pulse width modulation, cheaper but less efficient. Two, MPPT, maximum power point tracking, more expensive but up to 30% more efficient, especially in cloudy conditions or with longer wiring runs. For larger systems, it's worth investing in an MPPT charge controller to get the most energy out of your solar panels. Let's pull all these components together with a practical example. Say you have the following requirements. 1. Daily energy usage, 5 kilowatt cow. 12 peak sun hours, 5 hours. 3. Battery backup for 2 days, 10 kilowatt for this setup you'd need when 6 300 watt solar panels, 1.8 kilowatt total, to ensure consistent energy production. 2 4 200 a lithium batteries for a total of 10 kilowatt storage capacity. 3 a 600 watt pure sheen wave inverter to power your appliances. 4 an MPPT charge controller to efficiently manage power from the panels to the batteries. This system will keep your home running smoothly, even on cloudy days and through the night. One final tip when building an off-grid system, plan for future growth. You might add new appliances or increase your energy consumption over time, so it's smart to leave room for extra panels, batteries and a larger inverter. Installing a slightly larger system now can save you the hassle of costly upgrades later. And there you have it, everything you need to size your off-grid solar power system properly. With the right calculations, you can build a reliable system that keeps your home powered day and night, no matter the weather. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and subscribe for more off-grid and solar energy tips. Have any questions or need help with your calculations? Drop them in the comments and I'll do my best to help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.